Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 41 of the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. I am delighted you're here. If you're first time here, hello, hello, good to meet you. If you're back regularly, then you know I love you. And of course, I appreciate you choose to spend this time with me in your pocket, in your car, <laughs> wherever you are listening to this. It always fascinates me where they listen, <laughs> doing the dishes, who knows? or sat down in a meditation chair, just taking it all in. <laughs> Whatever it is, I love that you're here. Make sure if you haven't already, you make sure you hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on, so you can be notified when these episodes come out. And as always, I encourage you to give me some feedback. Let me know what you love about this show. You can leave a review on iTunes. That would be fantastic. And... Um, <clears throat> oh, what a cough. Is it COVID? Are we past that one yet? I don't know. <laughs> and of course, if you haven't already downloaded the MPA sheet for free, I talk a lot about MPA, non-personal awareness, here on this show. It's a fantastic way to stop taking things personally, let go of the yucky stuff, let in the yummy stuff. And the good news is you can get access to that process absolutely free. Just go to NPA, that's November Papa Alpha 4, that's the number, dot me slash MPA sheet, or alternatively go to the podcast website, which is www.beabrillianthuman.com, and you'll find links to it there. Now, this episode is all about relationship growth. You know, that sticky edge <laughs> where relationships don't always go so wonderfully well, but it's about growing, right? But I have a question for you. So have you ever found yourself really fighting for an idea of what you want a relationship to be? rather than facing what it really is. That seems to be kind of part of the human condition, I suppose. Um, but I don't know if you've also found, if you've done that, you find there comes a point where the truth kind of kicks. It kicks and kicks until it just can't be ignored anymore. And at that point, you know, I've noticed that, well, broadly speaking, there's kind of three ways we tend to approach these kind of situations. And I call them the good the bad and the ugly. And, uh, and I'm going to share those with you today. Now, the good, the bad and the ugly, in case you don't recognize that, it's a reference to um, the spaghetti western. So you could call this the spaghetti episode, <laughs> I suppose. So the bad one, you know, is really crap, you, you know, but it's so common in relationship. I'll even go to as far as to say that it's, it's kind of the cultural norm. So I'm going to let you know why it's a tragedy, um, so hopefully you can avoid it, or at least spot it quicker and change it, so you don't have to suffer sort of the inevitable consequences of going down that path. The ugly one, well, you know, it's it's ugly, <laughs> though it does have some redeeming features. Now, this one, interestingly, is, is really, or most pr prevalent in this sort of wonderful world of spiritual and personal growth. In fact, you might often find that it's thrust in your face by well-meaning, cute air quotes, awakened folk. Um, but alas, it's fatally flawed, at least I think so. I'm going to tell you why. And again, you know, hopefully you can you can make use of it when it's appropriate, but not fall into that quagmire of pain, you know, that it can so easily lead to. And the good one, well, it's super wholesome and I highly recommend it. So I'm going to lay that one out for you and tell you why it's so great and hopefully inspire you to go with that one next time you're in that kind of relational funk. But it can be super scary because it's kind of countercultural. So have a look at those fears again today and, um, you know, offer some perspectives that hopefully will help you overcome them. So if you want to up level your relationships, especially at the point of growth where that proverbial poo hits the fan, let's uh, keep on listening as we dive into episode 41. All right, all right, all right. So before we dive in, I'm going to give you a heads up because 
you know, this episode's about relationships. And I don't know if you know this, but but boundary issues are one of the main causes of relational conflict. They create heartache and uncertainty and having sort of poor or unheld boundaries, it, it, it really saps at your self-esteem. It takes away your energy, your sense of trust, you know, your general be- well-being. You know, and as we're, as we're talking about relationships, and uh, we'll be talking a little about boundary issues later, I wanted to give you a heads up that in a few short weeks, I'm going to be reopening Boundary Bootcamp, which I ran last year. And uh, it's my stellar four-week online course where you'll get everything you need to overcome your boundary blocks, build healthy boundaries, the ones that work for you, and hold them even in the face of resistance. So you can start feeling great about yourself, revamp your relationships so they're juicier, healthier, and harmonious, and um, and without you having to compromise and start creating that life that you love. So if you recognize that you have boundary issues, I'd love to get you into the program when it opens. So if you want to be notified, make sure you head over to, you can go to this week's episode show notes, which will be www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 41. You can go direct. I'll give you the long link. It will also be in those show notes, which is go to the mpaacademy.com slash boundary hyphen bootcamp. Or if you want a super short link, I'm probably giving too much information. A super short link would be mpa4.me, as I said earlier, number member papa alpha, number four.me slash boundary bootcamp, one word, capital B's. But just go to the show notes, go to the website, you'll find it there. And I want you to sign up to the wait list because um, now if you happen to listen to this in a few weeks after I've recorded it, then uh, it may well be live and you can go ahead and jump straight into it. But um, but when I launch it, I'm actually going to be making this year an insane offer for a limited period. So getting on the wait list means you'll definitely be notified and won't miss that offer. All right, let's get into it. So now we're not going to go in order, the good, the bad and the ugly. Sorry, whatever your name is, Sierra Leone. <laughs> I can't think of the guy's name. Mr. Spaghetti Western. We're not going in order. Uh, we're going to go bad, ugly, and then good. All right. Now, what's the bad one? The bad one is, you know, in these difficult relationship situations, you attempt to make them change. Well, what can I say to that? Good luck with that. <laughs> But have you noticed that's often what we do? But you know, getting to a place of needing or even wanting them to change in order for you to be happy or fulfilled, it gives what it did, gives all the power away, and also it puts an enormous amount of pressure on them and ultimately then the relationship. In fact, what it does is it makes you the victim. You know, we even get self-righteous about being the victim. You know, it's like uh, you become all that kind of, how could they? Why don't they just, they become like the enemy of, uh, you know, the insensitive person who doesn't behave exactly like you'd like them to behave. How dare they be themselves? (laughs) Now, of course, you know, talking about things, you know, dialogue can, you know, it can inspire your beloved to, to it's sort of what's often called in relationship work, a stretch, you know, to discover for themselves what's true for them. But ultimately, you know, their shift has to come from them. It has to come from their their true inner desire. Otherwise, it's it's sort of fundamentally unsustainable and it only perpetuates the cycle. And by the way, you know, you know, just wishing and wishing is is <laughs> It's a recipe for limbo. And I'm not speaking like uh, above you because, oh, my God, all these three strategies, I've done them all. The last one being the good one, of course. And I have done that. But I've done I've definitely done this one. You know, I've been the righteous victim about they just how could they be so heartless not to change? Why don't they change to suit me? (laughs) Given my power, all that stuff. It's one of the reasons I created Boundary Bootcamp, because I've walked the boundaryless walk into the the place where I've discovered the delights of healthy boundaries. Um, So yeah, waiting around, wanting them to change, this is the bad way to go about it. Now, as I said, it's very common. I don't know if you've noticed, I mean, most of the soap operas are based on people (laughs) taking this approach. Um, You know, generally, if you get together with friends, they're going to support this idea, you know, oh, you know, he's he's so awful, or, you know, she's a right cow, you know. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, the guys are going to say, yeah, she is, you know, she should be different. And the girls are going to say, yeah, he's awful. Why don't men do this and change? And he should change and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it, it's very much part of the the general idea about how relationships work, you know, what's supposed to happen. Other people are supposed to change to suit you, right? But it's a very painful, incredibly disempowering, and ultimately, I think, um, you know, either you end up in a relationship which is sustained by uh, drama and pain and uh, pure belligerence, or it can just go the way of the dodo. So that's the bad one, attempting to make them change. So what's the ugly one? Well, you might be surprised at this one, especially listening to this podcast and being, as I say in the intro, a growth-seeking being. The ugly way to do it is to look at yourself. Now, I'm... <laughs> I can hear that <gasps> from you, my dear listener. Uh, but let me talk about that. So this is where you look at your dissatisfactions, you know, your issues, you know, your your judgments, like they're mirrors for your internal world. So you look at their what's wrong with them, what's their issues, and your judgments of them, and you look at it and, and basically make it about you. It's, it's all about me. You know, I mean, and again, here's my qualification for this. Here's my distinction. You know, in my experience, it can be a great use of conflict that's brought on by that growth impulse in relationship. And certainly, I mean, this whole show, in a sense, is about, you know, looking at yourself and, and improving yourself. So it can certainly help you to become more conscious of your, you know, your own unhelpful patterns. And that's something I applaud, I celebrate, I encourage, I I hope to inspire you to do that. But at some point, it reaches its limits, and definitely in relationship, it can actually become counterproductive um, because ultimately, relationships, you know, demand collaboration. <laughs> it's not just you in that relationship. You know, the, the world isn't a literal mirror. Maybe your interpretations can be, um, but we're all, you know, individual volitional creatures. And and what tends to happen, this is where, you know, it can become real poison, is, is you start to put all the weight of the relational responsibility onto your own shoulders. In other words, you, you enter that mode where, you know, I must fix myself in order to make this relationship work. Well, that really is a toxic idea if you really think about it. I mean, it's it's a burden on you. Um, you know, it, it really opens you to some horrifically toxic relationships where someone's just being an absolute ass, and you're saying, it's because of me. <laughs> when I sort out my issues, then he or she will change. Again, I have done this. I know it. And when you when you think about it a bit deeper, what you're actually doing is is you're disempowering your, you know, your beloved. Um, as well as putting huge pressure on yourself. So it's really a setup for relational failure. And it actually puts you into reactive mode rather than a proactive state. So you're you're reacting to whatever the stuff is that's coming up in relationship. You're reacting going, okay, that's me, that's my stuff. I've got to work on my stuff. Now, I am not saying that you, you don't have responsibility to take care of you being an ass. <laughs> Acknowledging when that is... But that's a very different thing to saying that basically the underlying, um, what's the word I'm looking for, implication of that idea is that you solely are responsible for the relationship. Now, I know a lot of the time we might not necessarily consciously admit that, but I'm, I, what I love to do a lot of the time is to look at what is the underlying implication of certain ideas that we tend to take on as rote. Because the mind, you know, as Byron Katie says, uh, takes things literally. So it will take that idea and go, look, fundamentally, even though you're saying, yes, he ought to change maybe a bit at the same time, or she ought to change, uh, part of you is going, well, really, underneath, I know it's my fault, and I just need to sort my stuff out. And that, my friend, um, is, is a very painful place to be. So, you know, if your relationship's in a rocky space and you take this road, you know, you're only really going to cause yourself additional suffering. So it's got its place, but fundamentally it's ugly. And it's ugly because there are some hidden yuckinesses in there, which if you take them on, they're going to cause you a lot of pain. So that brings us to the good. Oh. <laughs> so here's my view of what's the good way to go. 
which is where you align yourself fully with what you want. What do I mean by that? So you get super clear on what you want to experience. And, you know, you can let go on a deep level of everything you've created in the relationship and open to where life is pointing you. Told you it was scary. (laughs) But what it does, think about it, it drops any judgment of what they are or well, what they are doing or what they're not doing. So it ju- drops the judgment of them. It doesn't make them wrong. You focusing on what you want to experience doesn't make them, their choices, their behavior wrong. It doesn't have an agenda for them. Um, and it doesn't make who you are wrong in any way either. So again, you're bringing that neutrality and in fact, a sense of honoring of both of you. Um, you know, and, and it, it, obviously, this is going to challenge you because it, it demands really that you you get clear and state your healthy boundaries. Um, I mean, boundaries, if you think about it, they're, they're like a clear prayer to the universe that lay out who you are and what you wish to experience in your relational life. I mean, and you're simply saying when you're coming from a place of healthy boundaries, you're you're really saying from your own clarity, this is what I would like to experience. This is where I'm heading. And in, in relationally, what you're saying is, you know, I'd love you to come with me on this journey where the, the place that feels good to me. But of course, you're free to choose if that's what you want to. So it empowers them and it empowers you. It, it says, you know, this is what works for me and this is what works for you. So you can both have the opportunity of, of both getting what you want. And any dialogue that you have from this place is going to come from a much more deeply wholesome space within you rather than the dialogue that says, fundamentally, you can dress it up however you like. But, the, you know, the, the bad way is, is, you know, there's something wrong with you, Mr. or Mrs. <laughs> and you need to change. Or the other one, the ugly one, which is, you know, I get it. There's something wrong with me and I need to change, uh, you know, and you're all fine with your toxic behavior. <laughs> But th- this is a place where everybody's super clear and it's it's a really wholesome way to, to come from, well, it's a really wholesome place to come from. And, you know, you know, I I strongly encourage you to trust that e- even though it might get rough, because there can be some adjustment, especially if you've not had healthy boundaries before, you know, it can change can be uncomfortable. Um, but remember that, you know, what you're seeking is also seeking you and life will find a way you know, it will find a way with or without them. But fundamentally, it's it's your life. You know, <laughs> this is your life, which leads me kind of on to the scary bit. I did say, you know, it can be a bit scary. So I think it's good that we take a look at the scary bits. So what's the answer to all these fears? Well, it's simple, isn't it? Just let go of the outcome. There you go. Job done. <laughs> Well, it's true, but it's not necessarily easy. So I, I do like to look at, you know, what's what's really happening, what's going on there. So I, I guess the main objection that I hear to, you know, the good in quotes, um, you know, really getting clear on what you want and, and standing in your healthy boundaries is a very understandable fear. You know, it's the fear of what it will set in progress. You know, getting clear on what you want and speaking it is a, you know, again, in quotes, a dangerous thing. It, it has consequences. In a way, you know, one of the things that is the issue of people without boundaries is that they feel like they're inconsequential and invisible, but they're terrified of um, of standing in who they are because there are consequences. So the, the sort of the questions and the fears that come up, you know, will it end the relationship? Um, or another good one, especially with boundaries, is am I being selfish? Hmm. Um, but really, it's what are larger consequences going to be if I get clear on what I want, state it clearly, and hold true to that boundary? And the thing is, it's like we're so culturally trained to deny what we truly want um, and trained to, you know, to cling on with grim death to the status quo. But let's think about it. So really letting go of what has been or, or is undesirable is actually that. It's letting go of what is undesirable. You know, and, and the, the truth is there are so many ways it can resolve into, again, the opposite, the desirable you know, and yes, relationally, that might may, may be with or without the same person. I used that phrase before. I know that can strike fear into hearts of people. But the, in the end, as I said, this is your life. You know, you do deserve to live the life that you desire. 
Now, I mean, one of the things that I absolutely loved when I got my teeth into creating Boundy Bootcamp last year was, was I really dived deep into all those unconscious drivers, you know, that keep us stuck in our in our poor boundaries, you know, feeling disempowered and afraid, you know, um, you know, afraid of simply stating and sticking to what works for us. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, I'm not going to kid you. It, it, when you come to Boundary Boot Camp, it, it is a boot camp and it, it's aptly named. Um, because, you know, if you're serious about stepping from being a pushover and feeling crap about yourself, um, you know, the boot camp asks you to look squarely in the eye of your instinctual survival strategies, your emotional self-seductions, all those things that that keep you small. I mean, those are the things that that have you repeating that pattern of saying, you know, this time it's different. I'm definitely going to state my boundaries, um, which you may do only to find yourself, you know, capitulating at the first sign of resistance or conflict. You know, and that's that's how you spiral into super low self-esteem. And, you know, you become majorly susceptible to manipulations and those toxic relational dynamics. In fact, one of the things that I that I wanted to include or did include in Boundary Boot Camp, um, there's like a nearly a one hour video. It's like a, a masterclass in itself, looking at all the different um, sort of manipulation tactics. Now, I, I actually do it in, in the form of these are the narcissistic tactics. But one thing to realize is that um, all narcissists do with those manipulation tactics is turn the volume way up on what we all do anyway. In fact, they're the, the manipulation tactics that, that uh, you know, we're, we're sold as perfectly normal just to get what we want. And one of the things when you start stating clearly what you want and it's what we're afraid of is that we're going to um, be met with the resistance and we're going to be met with, you know, quite clever manipulation. So that video in itself lays out not only what they are, but what they're really up to and how to deal with them. <laughs> And, you know, that's that's one of the things um, that makes this good approach of really stating clearly, getting clear on what you want and stating it clearly and sticking to it um, such a scary thing. Because it's not only that, um, you know, we're scared of the conflict, which can certainly be part of it. I mean, you know, we look at what are the underlying issues around that. But one of the things that, that I found when I was on this journey is is that I was scared of betraying myself. Because if you think about it, if you're someone who's you know, often says yes when you mean no, or or you you try to hold a boundary and then the the resistance comes up and you capitulate. You know, you start to lose trust in even your own ability to to do it. So the whole thing becomes very scary. So really, the the I kind of got sidetracked to <laughs> getting enthusiastic about boundary boot camp. What was the point I wanted to make, Joel? Come on, Joel, stick with the program. Um, well, I should say, having said all that, you know, if you recognise this. Go there, go to mpa4.me slash boundary bootcamp, both capitals. Go to the show notes, beabrillianhuman.com slash 41. Get on that wait list and jump into the program. Now, let me get back to the point. What was the main point? <laughs> it is that when you let go of the consequences, which I know is scary, but when you do, um, you know, all those ideas that, that sponsor your urges to stay small or untrue to what you want in your life, um, can be let go of. Those are the things that stop you. Um, and the good approach, you know, of putting your focus on what works for you, stating and holding your boundaries, is an empowerment of you. And everybody wins. Everybody is clear. Everybody, you know, gets to have what they truly want. Um, and again, that fear of relational separation, you know, from holding boundaries, from stating what we want, all this stuff, all that, that good stuff. That's one of the biggest fears, I think, is that, you know, it'll end the relationship. But I want to reiterate to you that that so often what actually happens when you get clear in yourself and you feel better about yourself um, is actually a revamp in the relationship. Things can get juicier. They can get more connected, more intimate. You know, they're, they're clearer, they're cleaner. And there's a that sort of you get a sense of genuine harmony, you know, without having to make those unhealthy compromises. Because just, just the act of doing that, and again, I'm going to point, as I said that, I've got off the well, there may be a, a sort of slight objection, aren't you saying you're taking care of yourself? There's a very strong distinction here. The, the ugly one, where you're making yourself responsible for the relational changes, is very different from um, judiciously using the work that you would need to do on yourself 
in order to have a healthier relationship dynamic where you don't have to compromise and you don't take full responsibility. What you take responsibility for there is not the relationship, but just stating clearly what works for you. And you give responsibility of choice back, in fact, to the other person so they can decide if that aligns with them or not. In which case, if it does, they can go, well, that's great. I'm clearer. In fact, I've never thought about it. Let's go there together. That really works. Or they can go, you know what? That's, does, that sounds like bullshit to me. I'm off. But either way, you're honoring you, you're honoring them. That's what makes it a healthy boundary. So <laughs> I finally got there. Hurrah! That's a wrap for the today. And um, one last thing I do want to say, though, is that, again, the MPA process in itself is actually amazing for bringing you back uh, back to you and for letting go of the outcome, you know, especially relationally. And, and that's why, you know, it's used as one of the main engines of transformation in Boundary Bootcamp. Um, but if you can't wait <laughs> and you haven't already, you can get it for free. That's the good news. You can go and download the MPA process free. And if you really want to make a go of it, then go and get hold of, if you download the, the, the sheet, by the way, you'll be uh, made a, a very good offer to buy the MPA process basic training video course. And there'll be a link for that in the show notes to download and get hold of that, um, which is a great way to get started today. Uh, unless, of course, you're listening to this a few weeks after, in which case, go to Bounty Boot Camp. <laughs> but go and do that. That's a great way. And of course, as just to remind you, um, it is a big area. And if you want some one-to-one -one support, you can get in touch about that. Just go to joelingmpa.com slash sessions. You can book a 10-minute free call with me where we can have a chat, make sure, you know, see if and how I can help you. And if you want to do those one-to-one -one sessions with me, um, how I can support you with that. So that's joelingmpa.com slash sessions. Now, today, I would love to know your thoughts on this episode. What did it bring up for you? What's your experience, especially around boundaries? Um, have you fallen for those traps like I have? Um, let me know. You can email me, joel at nonpersonalawareness.com. You can leave me a voice message on the podcast website. Um, you can contact me on social media. Every week there's always a post on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash MPA rocks. Um, leave me a comment there. Generally on, on social media, I'm Joel Young MPA, like on Instagram, Twitter, on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash Joel Young. Um, come find me. You know how to do it. Leave a comment. <laughs> or message me directly, you know, if you don't want to use email. And if you found this episode entertaining, informational, it's touched you, it's moved you, inspired you, informed you, go and tell someone about it. Let them know that uh, this is the place to come to be a brilliant human. And I will see you next week. All that remains is to cue the moo. Mm -hmm.